Because a lot of times we're used to seeing everything online. Um, how do you handle these things? You know what I mean? Like I said praying and praying. And I used to, to be honest, I used to mask it with like drugs, Xanax, syrup. I ain't too big with weed. I hit a blunt in there, but like I used to drink so fucking much. Really? I was drinking them. That what, like, what were we talking about? Liquor? Or were we talking about like lean? I can't fuck with no liquor. I was drinking so much syrup a day, bro. Like I, I was drinking them that three thousand dollars a day. I was drinking a pint of lean a day. What the fuck? For real? How'd you shake that, bro? Send me the rehab. The best rehab money can buy. How receptive? Because you know, as we talk about addiction. That's a hard conversation to have. Mm -hmm. Like, at times, you know, e even now, like, sometimes I cover artists, and I could tell, and sometimes I even talk to them behind the scenes, I could be like, man, I know your addiction is causing certain things, but it's hard to tell them that. Like, sometimes people in denial. Yeah. Um, how, is I, that, how is that with you? I seen myself overdosing. Oh, um, I had came back from a show. I forgot what show it was. I I don't remember what show it was. Dirk brought me out. I made it back to the crib. I laid on the floor, right? My, you know how you, you carpet at the crib yeah, and yeah, shit? Yeah. You lay on the carpet. I'm laying by my mama's feet. She at the crib. I, you feel me? So I feel myself going out, like it's good passing out, like going unconscious. And I wasn't scared to go unconscious. I was scared for that shit to happen in front of my mama. So I don't know how I, I threw myself on my um, on my chest and I regained my conscience. And the next day, I'm laying in the bed. I'm high as hell still. I get high than that. I'm like, damn. Um, Dirk texts me like, would you um, would you go to rehab if I if I paid for it? I'm like, yeah. So he like find the best rehab in Malibu. Did you think you had a problem at that point? I knew I had a problem. Really? Yeah, I knew I had a problem. I I knew I knew. How do you think he noticed it? Shit, cause that's my brother. Like I'm nodding off on live, and you know, Zoo, my brother Zoo. He, bro, what the fuck wrong with you? Like, get off live. He calling my phone just so I can pause. And I knew I had a problem, and it was like, damn, how the fuck? He, like, I'm like, damn, like, I'm big on energy, so I feel like he felt my energy. He, like, would you go to rehab if I, if I, if I sign you up? I'm like, yeah. He, like, find the best one in Malibu. I sent him three of them. Um, he came out of, like, $110,000. Really? Cash. I had no insurance. I sent the one, it was one that was 10000 It was probably a one that was like a couple thousand. And it was one like probably under 10000 luxury. Uh, 110, like, like the, the, all the works. All the works. Damn. Three chefs, master bedroom. You feel me? So. Yeah, that's love, bro. Yeah, that's real love. So I went there. I'm thinking I'm finna be, I'm like, see, all right, I'm finna get high as hell before I go to this motherfucker. <laughs> <book. laughs> so I'm thinking it's gonna be a week or two. They talking about come in Wednesday. Oh, yeah. why is Sunday? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Man, I got high all the way till I walked in that motherfucker. Yeah. I actually overdosed on the first day in there. How? It's normal for people to try to get over high before they go there. Like, this is my last time getting high. I'm finna get fucked up. I drunk a pint. Pop fives in like a dumbass, you know what I'm saying? And I, my breathing was labored while I was asleep. Mm. So I woke up and shit. Before they, before I went into the overdose, I, I guess I got out of it. And you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it was crazy. That was like, that was like one of the worst and best times of my life because that detox is a motherfucker. Describe it like. So, so, so you, you get pretty much high going into it, then you almost overdose like pretty much as soon as you get there. Mm -hmm. 
how is that process of kind of weaning off of like all these drugs you've been depending on? Oh, I'm talking about like you feel like you finna die. I'm gonna tell you, alcohol and and Xanax is the two drugs you can die of detoxing. Really? If you go cold turkey, you can't die from opioids uh, or any other drugs like whatever other people choice to do. But alcohol and benzos like Xanax, um, Klonopin, whatever like that, you can die off for that. So, bro, I used to be off um, a lot of Xanax. You ain't never heard it on that song. I love when he said off of, um, and when we shoot, what, what he said song? He said we ain't no goofies. And I told Duty them pills be having me nervous. Yeah, I, I was really like, yeah, like. But I felt like I was finna die detoxing. Then, you know, the worst part, like when I got over, like I had like a twelve day detox. It's a thirty day program though. I was one of the longest persons that was on detox, so it was like shit. My brain started coming back, and the worst part of it was waking up in the morning because everything I was trying to numb and hide from and get away from. They said that like your brain like an iPhone. So all the memories when I'm waking back up, it was flashing back. All the shit that I was trying to numb myself for years. I was doing this shit 12 years straight. Wow. So all that shit was coming back like I was scared to wake up. But it was like the top five doctors in the world, therapists. Like you got therapy. I wasn't doing none of that shit at first. How long did you stay there? I stayed there for the the thirty days, the twenty eight days. It was Jeez. really twenty eight days, yeah. The, coming out of that situation, though, I, temptations a motherfucker, especially in music. I, you know, I think music <laughs> is one of the worst professions. Where like, if you go in the studio, people are smoking, popping pills, <laughs> drinking. There's lean everywhere. Yeah. Temptations everywhere. I mean, shit. You walked in here, and the first thing we offered you was a drink, and yeah. you said no. Yeah. How do you resist um, that temptation? I take everything a day at a time because it's still hard. <laughs> I was having dreams about walk. I thought I was having a dream about walk. I'm trying to drown myself <laughs> in that shit. I, I'm like, shit. <laughs> like, for real, that shit is real. Like, I don't, I, don't, I don't nobody picking up no cup. Like, all the rappers, like, that shit not even cool no more. Sometimes I've heard... And I don't, obviously, it looked like you, you were doing it for more trauma that you were trying to suppress. I know some people do it for like creativity, right? And, and was that ever you? Like you're like, yo, shit, like, like my brain think a little bit different off it, and like, shit, I'll I be like snapping off that shit. So yeah, not even for creates. I was always high, so I guess that came with the creativity. Damn. So now recording, it do feel different. Don't get me wrong, I'm not gonna say a lot to you, like, yo. Uh, it do feel different, like, damn. So I might hit a blunt. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I might hit a blunt and be like, um, all right, back. But I feel like it, it do kind of help creativity. Yo, it's crazy. You see you were high for fucking 12 years. God damn it. Yo, listen, man. Yo, yo, I, I, I give you the utmost credit in acknowledging you got the problem. And, of course, like, you've been trying to seek help, man. Mm -hmm. I think even you sharing that story there's a lot of dudes who like. I'm, I'm actually surprised you were mad receptive when Dirk calls you and said that. Yeah. A lot of people get defensive. A lot of people be like, you know, sometimes, sometimes the nigga who's telling you, not saying this was Dirk, but sometimes the person who realized that maybe you got an issue, shit, maybe they've done it with you before. Like, nigga, what you mean I got a problem, nigga? We've done this shit together. What the fuck is you talking? That's you know how I mean? was thinking when I finally got up in that bitch. I was like, why the fuck? I, why I say yeah so quick? But so, no, no, no. I get it, man. But uh, okay, so uh, obviously, and by the way, when did you get out? I think I went in June 15th. I was watching y'all interview from up in that motherfucker. For really? Of my life. What are you allowed to do in rehab? Because, like, clearly, you can't smuggle no shit in there, right? I'm gonna be honest, right? I'm gonna tell you a story. Yeah. My first day, mm -hmm. see, they ain't never had nobody that was off lean. That's how I really overdosed. I still had a four in my, you know? Yeah. 
So I was drunk a pint, popped all them Xanax, and drunk that shit in my room the God. first day. Oh, my motherfucker. God damn. <laughs> this motherfucker dirt gonna call me, right? So I don't know how the fuck he found out, like, but he thought it was, like, when I was at the end of it. He like, bro, like, what's up? I had to... I'm, I had the nurse like call him like drop. I had to drop in just to show him like, bro, I ain't know now. I ain't trying to waste your money, bro. I wouldn't do that. You, you got to have appreciation for Dirk. For Boy, I love him for that. It was days when I got out. I'm like, I just want to give him a hundred k so I could drink a cup again. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I, I think that that's one of the dopest things I've heard. Like your homie really. Put up a hundred k just to get you clean. Yeah, not to continue the habit. Or some people gonna be like, "All right, shit. At least I know this nigga down to crash out for me off this, the off, off these pills and mm -hmm. and this lean." Shit, I'm gonna just embolden him like he he wanted you to get healthy. That that's kind of fire, man. Yeah.